it's another Monday and that could mean only one thing. The tracker is back on your screens on City TV. We haven't done tracking for a while. So it's been all Black Stars this, Black Stars that, Athletics this. Today, we'll go to do some tracking around the world. And we'll be doing some tracking here in Africa as well because there are some African brothers of ours who are doing extremely great as far as the game of football is concerned. Remember that the AFCON 2023 um, draw has been done and a lot of talk has been about how uh, preparations for the World Cup will be basically basically predicated on the AFCON qualifier. And so uh, the players that will get invited for these qualifiers are basically the same ones or will form the core uh, that will eventually make it to the World Cup. And so that's the situation we have on our hands. We'll be looking at some of the potential candidates that could be representing Ghana during these qualifiers and also if they have the potential to eventually make it to the World Cup. So today's show uh, should be exciting as always. Sam Ziga is here uh, to do the discussions with me. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get straight into the motivational video. Today's video is about advice from the greatest athletes of all time. Enjoy that. We'll come back and we'll begin the conversation. Mohammed Ali confirming all, uh, confirming what we all know already. Yeah, indeed, the greatest. I'm, I'm not sure what you think at home, but I think he's the greatest. Um, a great guy in studio with me is Sam Ziga, and he will be here. Uh, he's here to talk tracking. Sam. It's good to have you back on the show. Ben, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> let's, let's just bounce off uh, from where we, le we left off the last time. We didn't have a substantive coach the last time you and I were on the show together. Um, I've had confirmation from the FA's um, upper hierarchy that Otoado is being engaged on a more permanent basis. Before we even delve into the discussion deeper, uh, what are your thoughts on this? And what have you yourself picked up as far as uh, making Otoado and his backroom staff permanent for the qualifiers and eventually the World Cup is concerned? Well, I'll start off by saying you don't change a winning team. Okay. And if you want that bit of consistency, if you want to see what we saw uh, uh, during the playoffs, then you don't have to change the technical team or technical bench. Okay. It looks like everyone involved in that particular team you know, is ready to work. And they're quite comfortable with what they are doing. Uh, so far, no qualms, no shenanigans, mm -hmm. no problems so far. Looks like there's unity. Everyone is ready to play his or her part or her role mm -hmm. uh, in championing the course. So from my perspective, I think that it's a good one uh, if they're going to maintain this particular, mm -hmm. you know, technical mind. Other perspective. Look, okay. these are young guys who know what they are about. Mm -hmm. They are so specific with their duties and roles. Yeah. And, and it was very evident in our game against Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, in both legs. Each and every one of them knows what to do at what point in time mm -hmm. and what mm -hmm. kind of demands that is required of them. Mm -hmm. So I look at it and I see light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I'm not praising them. I'm not over, I'm not over praising them. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure the million Ghanaians out yeah. there are also... Or, or, they also buy into yeah. the narrative or mm. what I'm thinking. First with Otuado. Okay. Um, I was privy to some information about what he demanded from each and every player, even before mm. the collapse were made or were confirmed. Mm. And, and it was brought to the fore when he played against Nigeria. You mean he spoke to, he spoke to every player every individually, other player before individually even the playoffs? Not just that, but the specific roles he wanted them to play in the team. If you're not going to start, he would assure you, look, I can assure you of a starting bet. Okay. So already coming into the team, you know the kind of role you're coming to play. And, and things of this nature actually clears every other doubt from the players' minds. Mm -hmm. Because you are coming, you know this is your role. Yeah. I'm coming to start or I'm not coming to start. And even if I'm starting from the bench, this is what the coach needs from me. Okay. And I love the monitoring from him as well. Uh, it tells you this is a coach who is ready to track the players, yeah. stay consistent, and actually stay in touch with them. That's how you get the best out of your players. Mm. Now, just to put you on the spot, I don't like putting you on the spot <laughs> a lot, but yeah. you are close to Thomas, of course. Um, he captained Ghana during those two playoff games. What have you picked up from him in terms of the kind of coach Otto Ado is? What, what, what kind of interaction did he have with him? Did he have with the players? What's, what's the relationship between Otto Ado and the current crop? Did you, did you, have you been able to gauge that? Uh, well, uh, not entirely, but 
what I picked up, mm -hmm. uh, like a bit, a bit closer, is that he has a very good relationship with the players. Uh, there's that manager-player uh -huh. relationship. Yeah. Uh, you know, outside the country or in Europe, there's that kind of rapport between managers and players. And, and it's something that's really common these days. Yeah. And once you have that relationship, which is healthy, yeah. you get the best out of your players. That's, I mean, no disrespect to previous managers or previous coaches, but this looks kind of different. It brings a different kind of vibe into the yeah. team and all that. And I think we are in for, for you know, a good run. Mm. And, I, and I was asking this because we interviewed Gideon Mensa here and he said emphatically that when they first communicated with Otoado, they just got the sense that he was going to be a good coach. Just purely based off how clear his communication was and like you just mentioned, his ability to properly define roles for individuals. And Absolutely. so I'm not too shocked you're saying this. I just hope that the Ghana Football Association can tie this up uh, pretty quickly, uh, get Otoado to come in, um, get him to start doing his scouting and stuff like that so we can move it on. Well, let's go to our first player on our tracking radar today and we go to South Africa. Orlando Pirates is where we are going. Kwame Pepra plays for Orlando Pirates. Remember Kwame Pepra? He was playing for Kim Fraser Football Club just a year ago. Well, guess what? He scored his fifth goal uh, for Pirates. He scored five goals in 20 appearances. And this was a very crucial goal because this goal eventually took the game to penalties. Uh, but it was also a goal that will send them through to the semi-final of the CAF Confed Cup against Simba of Tanzania. So uh, I, I think we can have the goal on our screens now. And then, um, yeah, so there, there you have it there. Orlando Pirates versus uh, uh, Club Simba of Tanzania. And Kwame Pepra, he's not the tallest guy. He's not the tallest guy. Great leap uh, on him there, uh, towering above everyone else to score that particular goal. Look at that again. There. So Kwame Pepra getting on target for um, Orlando Pirates. And I, I was just monitoring Orlando Pirates Twitter, right? The Pirates mm -hmm. fans absolutely love this guy. Yeah. Like, he was taking group selfies with the fans. He was, they, they absolutely love him. So, He's not had a stellar season. I, I wouldn't say five goals in 20 is stellar, but it's, it's a great return for somebody who is adopting to a new league. Some just initial thoughts on Kwame Pepper's departure from Ghana to Orlando Pirates. What, what have you made of that move entirely so far? Well, I think it's been progressive, uh, if you ask me. Um, it's quite difficult for players to actually adapt to other leagues, especially the South African League, okay. of all leagues in Africa. You'd have to play the patient game, warm yourself into the league, mm -hmm. and then, you know, hit the ball or, or set the, the, the tone immediately. Yeah. You look at that goal he scored, uh, right from where his, his, you know, his winger got the ball, you could see he signaled him. Mm -hmm. This is a striker who knows what he's about, knows what he wants to do with the ball before the ball gets to him. And he picked the spot, and then that was it. That's what good strikers do. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, forget about five goals in 20 matches, but this alone... It's quite instinctive from, yeah. from Kwame Pepa. And, you, know, and, and, you don't, you don't and, get and, this enough from yeah. strikers. And, and I'm saying this because, look, I, I don't know if you've met Kwame Pepa before. He's a very short guy. Yeah. Very short <laughs> not, guy. Not, not the tallest yeah, of players. Not, he's not the tallest guy. And if you see that, I, 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 I'm, I'm showing this video because look at the leap. Look at how Absolutely. high off the ground he gets to get to that ball. Just to meet the ball. Yep. Um, and look at him raising his hands. It's yeah. absolutely amazing. It's mm. absolutely amazing. There are way taller defenders than him in that box. He outjumps everybody. He gets to that ball, and it's a really crucial goal for Orlando Pirates. Some, that, that's some tough stuff from him. It can only, I mean, lovely stuff. be better for him. But look, look, from, from, from such a stage, it gives you that motivation. I yeah. mean, it's quite intrinsic. Yeah. Scoring in the quarterfinals, making sure a team gets to the semifinal. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't be surprised to see him score in the semifinal as well. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it starts from he, there. He, that's, he, that's he's, how people... He's, he's having quite the season. And obviously, that brings me to my next question. Is he somebody... We should give an invitation to for I'm not even going to go to the World Cup. The Afcon qualifiers. Why not? <laughs> Why not? What is what I is mean, his justification for getting a call up? I mean, if, if we are if we are bringing him into the team, mm. how do we justify it? Well, uh, Wolf one, he's an attacker, mm -hmm. uh, someone we can, you know, consider his past records in the Ghana Premier League to play for a side like in Faisal yeah. uh, last season and racking such amount of goals. That tells you yeah. he's got something up his yeah. sleeves. And he so, scored all types of goals. All, left foot, right, right foot, foot, close headers, range, long range. Penalties and yeah. all that. This tells, you, this, this tells you that he's got a lot under his sleeves. And then again, talk about the South African League yeah. and even the CAF Confederations Cup. That's the second most prestigious competition mm -hmm. as far as club mm -hmm. football is concerned mm -hmm. on the continent. Yep. So if you find a player 
uh, who is in such a competition yeah. and is scoring. I mean, there are a lot of eyeballs on him now. True. Uh, his stock is going to rise True. very soon, pretty True. much soon. So it's good that we monitor such players and give them a look in, not immediately call him up. But, I mean, he could be considered as well. Once you have your players, you know, banging in their goals, you know, putting in effort, showing what they can do, yeah. uh, there's every reason to give them a chance, provided the fact that they'll come and deliver. Mm. Talking about coming in to deliver, Kame Pepra's teammate <laughs> is Black Star's second deputy captain, Richard Ofori. Now, he saved the penalty and then scored the winning penalty to take his team to the semi-final. Fantastic stuff. Let's, let's check out that penalty from uh, Richard Ofori. If we have it, we'll, we'll have it for you in your shot there. So look at Richard Ofori there. Look at that penalty from That's Richard Ofori. That's massive confidence. How is how, a goalkeeper? And, and look at the, the celebratory <laughs> dance to boots. Oh, my goodness. You know, Ben, uh, to be honest, I was quite scared for him Yeah. Uh, when he stepped up to That's as to, cool to as, that as it gets. Very, very cool. It, it, you know? it, it gets no calmer than this as far as I'm, penalty taking is concerned. Absolutely. You don't get such a demeanor from goalkeepers, especially when it's time for penalty shooting yeah. to... to, to I have that confidence mm -hmm. to go and take that kick and kick it that way. Yeah. That tells you... Ice cold. Ah, oh, fantastic, you know. And look how you celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I saw a few comments from Orlando Paris fans telling Kwame Prepara to teach Richard Ofori some new dance moves because these dance moves won't cut it. <laughs> Ofori is trying to behave like Dennis Odell. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. But, I mean, to, to, the, to the broader conversation, he's been injured for a long while. Um, he, he was brought in... Uh, for the playoffs, didn't didn't keep post, but good signs for us clearly. Absolutely, good signs. Uh, uh, obviously, our number one. <laughs> I know. Is he still of, our number one? Uh, yeah, he's still I, our number I, one. I, 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 and and, and I, I think this has become the second deputy captain. Hmm, I, I think this has yeah. become a controversial topic. Why then did Otuado not fix him between the sticks for the two playoff games? Uh, uh, probably because uh, he just came back from, from injury, from injury, and uh, he would, he wouldn't want to risk. The situation, so just well, give I mean, him some time was, to warm himself back. And, and Wallacott had momentum. Uh, exactly, exactly. So maybe that's what we can look at. But before he walks back into the Black Stars setup for me on any day, when he's fully uh, healthy and back in, back keeping regular games, rightly so. Um, he's got the confidence, experience. He knows how to man in post in big games. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's someone who knows the African terrain pretty well. Yeah, uh, I don't see anything wrong with him, provided he is, you know up and running and kicking, uh, someone who would get like 30 games a season. Yeah. I don't think the Black Stars set up or that number one slot. Talking about the, the goalkeeper slot, right? Um, so at, at the moment, we have Ofori, we have Wolakot, we have Manaf, and then we have Atizigi. Atizigi, Atizigi yeah. was in post this weekend for St. Gallen. Uh, did pretty well, I believe. But do you think that that position needs an upgrade on what we currently have? Is there room for a new name to possibly come in and shake things up? Oh, Ben, that's quite a difficult question. But I look around and I can't see any other goalkeeper apart from those we have on the local scene. Mm. I have my own reservations about them. The local uh, scene goalkeepers? Yes, I'll yes. take those reservations in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because, I mean, uh, it's, it's quite normal that everyone will call for their inclusion to, into the national team. Okay. But the big question is, are they better than those out there? Mm. Uh, funny enough, the week... We were having a conversation about Lawrence Atizigi. Yeah. Uh, I switched my radio to a local media um, you know, station. Okay. And they were bashing Atizigi, actually. But the next moment, I opened my, you know, my phone, mm -hmm. go onto the internet. Uh, in the Swiss media, yeah. they were actually hailing Atizigi for his heroics the previous day. So I was yep. asking myself, like, yep. uh, what's going on? So I really had to go through it mm -hmm. and, and monitor, you know... He's a very stable goalkeeper very stable for, goalkeeper. for St. Gallen. That's if very I'm being well honest. For, St. Gallen. for a very goalkeeper stable. to be a number one yeah. in St. Gallen, yeah. he might have his, you know, poor moments in yeah. the national team. I think everybody, every goalkeeper has their has poor moments. actually. So, yeah. I don't see why we should bash, you know, Lawrence Atik. He's, he's a very good, good goalkeeper, goalkeeper yeah. to, be, to, be, to be very sincere to the champ. Mm. He's been very good for St. Gallen. I think he's from Wafa, right? One of the Wafa no, or Red, Red Bull. Red Bull, Red Bull Red Academy. Bull, ah, yeah. Red Bull mm. So you look at the trajectory, right from the academy, yeah. you need a ball-playing goalkeeper, yeah. you can call on Lawrence Atig. I know many people would disagree with me. But I mean, with recent, time, for, recent form hasn't been kind to him mm. in national colours, yeah. but I, I, I personally don't doubt his abilities yeah. at all. Players in general have their bad patch, so when uh, you possibly see their bad patches, uh, you, you shouldn't be judging them on that. But look, mm. 
Atizige is a good goalkeeper yeah. and, and should always be included in the national, provided he's kicking and then, you know, he's putting up consistent performances with Singalin. Well, it's a goalkeeper's discussion still. <laughs> and so we go to Swindon Town yeah. or the English League 2, where Joseph Jojo Wallacott, Charlie, most wanted. <laughs> well, Jojo Wallacott was literally the most wanted man in Ghana uh, ahead of, uh, uh, after the AFCON. It looks like he's won a lot of people back into his fold. He was named League 2 goalkeeper of the season. League 2 goalkeeper of the season. And it was a little surprising for me because he shipped in a ton of goals this season. I mean, it's not just about the goalkeeper per se. It's yeah. about the defenders he has around him. Oh, yeah. But is this a consequence of his national team form? Or you think that sometimes goalkeepers will concede goals, but they do their bits, they, they do their bits well enough to be able to merit such laurels? Yeah, but there are two things. Uh, one, you might be shipping in the goals, mm -hmm. but the next thing, you might also be doing some fantastic saves. Uh, saves sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he has, uh, you know, been on the receiving end <laughs> with the goals and all that, yeah. like you rightly mentioned. Drinking uh, goals. Drinking goals, but defense, <laughs> defense could also play a, a, a but. huge part. But also, we look at his bigger moments or his positive moments. Yeah. That's the saves he does in a game. I mean, it could have been worse. If not for his heroic, sorry. And even with the Ghana national team mm -hmm. at the AFCON, we saw him yeah. do some sp splendid saves. Game the against Afcon. Morocco could Morocco, have ended 2 0. 2 0, yep. <laughs> you know, against Ghana. Yeah. We saw him do that against Gabon and yeah. even against Comoros. Right. And in the recent games against Nigeria, he mm -hmm. literally kept testing the game. Yeah. Those two saves in Kumase. Huge. And, and you know, One save in he, Abuja. It, Huge. it was fantastic. So possibly. He could be, you know, shipping in the goals, but his saves could, could, could also be doing the mojo or doing the magic for him. I'm, I'm particularly curious on which goalkeeper Ghana goes with ahead of the qualifiers. Because, like Sam has just rightly said, Ofori, when he's fit, um, can be a little eccentric sometimes, but very stable pair of hands. And Ofori has very good communication with the defense. Right. He knows how to position his defenders. He knows how to tell you to move out of the way. He knows how to tell you to stand in a certain position. I don't see too much of that communication with Wallacott. I don't know if it's because, again, he's still pretty new with the team. Sometimes the players also tend to speak the local language on the pitch, yeah. and that might be a little bit of a hindrance. But I think that for a country, this is, this is healthy competition. I don't know how the coaches see it. Absolutely. But if I have a situation where I'm faced with two of my best goalkeepers going toe-to-toe -to -toe for a spot ahead of the qualifiers and possibly a World Cup. As, as a manager, I'm looking at this as a plus for my team. And so I'm looking forward to it. I don't know what you guys think about it. Uh, should Ofori be our number one heading into the qualifiers or should Wallacott retain his place? Um, you can send us your thoughts uh, via the text and WhatsApp number, which is displayed on your screen. Uh, so we'll have that number for you there. Yes, there you have it there on your screen there. Send us your thoughts. Let us know if you think Ofori should retain. Ofori should come back as number one or Wallacott should replace him. Let's take a quick break here on the show. When we come back, there's a lot more to track. Stay with us. Welcome back to the tracker here on City TV. Let's go to Jerusalem or Israel. Well, uh, Richmond Boachie, I don't play his football, um, often been criticized for not being prolific enough. Came on uh, during the AFCON and scored with practically one of his first touches in the tournament. This weekend, he scored a really, really important goal uh, for his team to take them eight points above the relegation zone. So, Richmond Boachie, I don't keep his team uh, in the top flight in Israel. So, it's, 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 it's Richmond to be forgotten. Or is he one of those guys that we should look at? I, I, I'm, I'm saying this because he tends to divide opinion a lot. There are, there are those who believe that he's past his prime and perhaps isn't prolific enough as a striker. But I ask myself, which Ghanaian striker is prolific? Again, yeah. do we bring him back in for the qualifiers? Because I heard that he was injured. In fact, he confirmed yeah. to me that he was injured yeah. during the playoffs and that he was in Milan getting treatment. Should, should he come back into this fold for, for the qualifiers? Ben, why not? I mean, you look around, uh, you look around the globe and you ask, how many typical attackers do we have as a country? Like typical, mm. typical out and out strikers. Natural we have as a goal country. scorers. Natural goal scorers. Yeah. We don't have that. Uh, even if we have, I mean, we have quite a minimum number. 
And Boachi Adam is someone you could always follow um, for goals mm -hmm. if you want someone to be a leading maximum. We saw that against Comoros at the AFCON. He's pretty clinical too. Very clinical. Uh, he might have had his bad games yeah. uh, in his previous, you know, staying to the, staying Black, to the Stars. Black Stars. But what I saw in Cameroon, mm -hmm. I mean, just about five minutes into I mean, <laughs> entering that game, he scored. Yeah. And it, it wasn't a clear-cut chance as well. Yeah, it, that's it all, that it tells wasn't. you what you can get from typical mm -hmm. strikers. Mm -hmm. And to score in a Jerusalem derby, I mean, that's one of the fiercest you yep, know, yep. Derby's in, in Israeli football. Mm -hmm. uh, to score the only goal in that game tells yeah. you a lot about him. Six in 26 appearances might not be flamboyant, might not be the numbers you want but, to talk about. Yeah. But, I mean, well, you can even cut him some slack because he's been injured, mm -hmm. in and out, and yeah. all that. You wouldn't expect a player to be consistent when he's, you know, off his, his, uh, you know visiting, the, as much visiting the, time. Treating yeah. room, mm -hmm. the treatment room and all that. But, look, this is someone who has proven over time, that when you give me the chance, I'll get you the goals. He might not, you know, have the best of outings for the Black Stars, mm -hmm. but... Doesn't even get enough opportunities he, when he comes down. When he's called, I mean, there's a cameo experience. I, I, remember, I, remember, and all that. I remember meeting him at the AFCON where he was telling us that um, he had told Rivas yeah. that he should put him in the game and scored. that he would score for Ghana. Yeah, and he scored. And lo and behold, he put him in the game and he got a yeah. goal. And, and, you know, I've never seen a confident striker. Ridiculous confidence. Like Richmond Batia. <laughs> Just like five minutes of yeah. interacting with him. Yeah. You could see the kind of person he is yeah. and tell what he brings to the floor. I mean, if you played for Juventus in your, in your earlier mm. years, you've gone on to become a Red Star Belgrade legend of some sorts. That's massive. Yeah. That's massive. So, like, for a player like him, I mean, consistency would be his, you know, uh, secret or his weapon, mm -hmm. a bit more consistent. Score enough to keep score himself, enough to keep in, himself the in the minds of, of the, the, the technical handlers of the senior national team, and that's it. Th does, does he fit into the style of play we have now? Because I'm, I'm, I'm asking this because in the past, again, immediate past, we go back to the AFCON, we tried out Andre Ayu as a false nine. Um, during the qualifiers, we brought in Afina Jan. I see some similarities between yeah. Jan and Yadom, but is Boachi Yadom the kind of guy we want in the, in the type of system we are playing, or you still will need different types of strikers? Just give me your perspective on that. Well, with this current formation that uh, Otuado and his charges are playing, uh, obviously you need Boachi Yadom, uh, possibly as an auxiliary striker okay. in there, uh, maybe Afina Jan yeah. and then Boachi Yadom, you know, just around him, just to make sure he... He pounces on some of the balls mm -hmm. that, you know, Afina Jan might poke home to him. And in situations of that nature, you need people who can run at defenders. Wachi Adam doesn't get tired running. He's quite That's a mobile a bit attacker. Of everything. Can yeah. run, can dribble. Can dribble. Jesus yeah. head very well. You know, it's been a while we had a striker who can use his head pretty much well. Mm -hmm. And Wachi Adam I mean, fits into the narrative, you know, perfectly. Uh, someone who can use his head, striker who can use both feet can run into spaces, get himself into very comfortable situations that every striker would want to find himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, there will be no harm in trying him up front. So Richmond Boatier, I don't like Sam said, scoring in one of the biggest derbies in Israel. Um, Beta Jerusalem is where he plays his football. He scored a sixth goal uh, for them um, over the weekend. Another player on this radar, he has basically made a living out of playing in Turkey. Doesn't move out of Turkey. It's his comfort zone. Um, he loves it there. I love it for him too. If you find a place where your football thrives, you should stay there. Joseph Atamalawe, he was also on target uh, this weekend. Kayseri Sport, they, they played entire sport this weekend. Scored the only goal of the game for them uh, this weekend. This is somebody Sam knows pretty well. Uh, Sam, Atama was on target again. Uh, he, he was on target this weekend. He's played a lot of minutes for Kayseri Sport this season. Yeah, I mean, that's what every player would want to see. And mm -hmm. uh, like you said, <laughs> he's quite comfortable in Turkey. Yeah. Uh, played for Bashak Shehir at a point, played yeah. for Fatih Kara Gomruk, came back, I think, uh, came back to, I'm not sure what team he came back to before he came to Kayseri, but he's been at Kayseri yeah, for a while now. In, in and out, yeah. just like that. And a very versatile player. Looks like uh, over the weekend he played in midfield. I, I, I prefer him in midfield. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he can play right from his days at Tema. He can play in a back three, mm -hmm. play as a right back, back. a midfielder, 
I mean, uh, I'm sorry, you can even play a little centre back if he's needed. Y- yes, yes. I mean, uh, at the under 20 World Cup in mm-hmm. Turkey, he played, played as a centre back. back. Was paired with Lawrence La- uh, T- uh, Lawrence Latte, Latte, actually. So there's a player who uh, knows the terrain very well in Turkey. Knows yeah. how to get the best out of, you know, what he does. Mm-hmm. Scoring was fantastic. He he rarely scores, yeah. but when he scores, it's really important and significant. Yeah, and yeah. To to see Atama, you know, happy again. I'm, I'm perfectly delighted for him. <laughs> Knowing him from Tema U, mm-hmm. uh, the black, you know, satellites, yeah. the senior national team, and all that. Looking like someone who has so much been forgotten. I was but just about to say that. Why? Nature, why? Well, maybe because, it like we, have, we, have a, we have a lot of quality in that centre back position. Well, so well. Uh, I wouldn't grab the national team. I mean, like we just said, for not calling him. can play as a right, right back, centre back, mm-hmm. defensive midfielder, central midfielder. I mean, that, that sort of versatility should come in handy. So maybe possibly, it? possibly as, as a squad player. More like. Uh, someone like Atama would want to be starting. <laughs> you know? I mean, you, I mean it's, it's the national team. Even uh, the best players sit on the bench sometimes. Uh, you, you don't get to decide whether you start or not. But more like for me, what does he need to do to get himself back on that national team radar? Because he plays a lot of minutes. I'm not sure why we don't call him up, especially even in the squads that get cut down. Eventually, why? I think it's about consistency. Uh, yeah. For some time now, he's been back and forth with injuries and all that. Okay. So possibly that could be the reason why he's not been able to make the cut. But once he's consistent and you know keeps playing at that particular level, then he can have a look in uh, at the national but, team. But what do you think is his best position? Having watched him all these years, where do you think he excels most? Atama thrives better in a three back, the right side of a three back. Mm. You have him at the right side. He's a ball playing defender, actually. Doesn't let the pressure get to him. Doesn't crumble under pressure. Knows how to, you know, find his way under mm-hmm. pressure. Mm-hmm. Gives the right passes. That's how come he's able to play in midfield as well. Yeah. Because in midfield, you need to have a decent passing range. Have an eye for, you know, those unique balls and all that. And he's got it all. Uh, not a typical defender like that, but yeah. someone who can handle the ball, you know, ring the passes around, mm-hmm. you know, and be a, bit, a little bit stable like yeah. that. That's, that's Atama for you. Mm. Joseph Atama Lawe um, on, on target for Kayseri Sport. Another player on target this weekend uh, was Osman Bukhari, um, left winger, right winger, plays for Nantes in France. Uh, there, you, there you have him there, uh, Osman Bukhari in, in your shot there. Uh, he was also invited for the playoff against Nigeria. I remember he came on in about the last three or five minutes or so, made a few runs. I mean, in that short time he came on, he nearly created a goal-scoring chance for himself, but he didn't take that chance properly. But he's always a player I've loved watching. I just don't think he gets one significant minute when he comes down to the national team. And also, I, I don't know. I don't know what he needs to get to the national team. I, I think he's done it all. Osman never stops running. Uh, yeah. If you're a defender, you're asked to mark someone like Osman he's a, Bukhari. He's a nightmare matchup. You're turning your flesh. Yeah. <laughs> he runs nightmare. at you at every given opportunity. I think they're our fastest players. Between Kamal Dean, Joseph Pinto, and Osman Bukhari, I think those are our quickest players yeah. in the national that's team. That's a fierce context. Yeah. That's, that's, that that's pays to burn for days. <laughs> I tell you. Yeah. you know? and, and, and to have him you know, score in the front link, uh, it tells you he's someone Came who... up the bench. His team were... Struggling for yeah. a goal, came off the bench, gave them a goal. Yeah, and he's put up some fantastic performances this season. Um, he's been consistent, yeah. if you ask me. That's what you, 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 you would want from your players. You require uh, them to be consistent uh, at club level. And mm-hmm. then the next thing you see them, you know, playing very well with the national team. Osman uh, with the under 23, Tankus under 23, mm-hmm. was more like the main man in that squad. Most Brilliant. of the goals came through him. Most of my memories <laughs> of him come from that team. Yeah. Yeah, being in that Olympic squad. Exactly. He scored twice against Gabon in Accra. Uh, We saw him also uh, play a very fantastic one against Algeria in Algiers. And, you know, that squad, uh, Osman Bukhari, Yaweboa, Joseph Pinto, Jonah Sabute, you know, Kingsley Fobi. That's another unique squad coming up. A good squad. (laughs) Absolutely. We just need to do better with our transitions as a nation, honestly. Um, Moving on, moving on. Next on my list, <laughs> these days, I think he's almost public enemy number one down here in Ghana, even though he's not played for the national team before. Mohamed Salisu. Boy, he's having a torrid past couple of weeks. 
look at that look at that image there. This is that image from this weekend's game. Um it was against Brighton and Hove Albion, if I'm not mistaken. Mohamed Salisu scoring an own goal in that game. In fact, since that game against Chelsea, he's not been the same again. He's been error after error after error. He doesn't look like himself out there, Sam. When it happens in the game sometimes, uh, as a defender, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you find yourself in his situation, sometimes things will go against you. But your is, reaction... Is it, is it pressure from all the... Yeah, um, pressure from all, all, all the all talk angles. about... Um, come and play for Ghana. If you come, if you won't play, go away. If you won't play, qualify. We don't want you. That can, is that is that pressure getting to him? Not so many players are able to handle the pressure and the hype and hysteria around the, the game. Um, first of all, you can talk about the positive hype mm -hmm. and then the, neg the negative one as well. I mean, the hype around he being the the only defender to make a, a number of blocks. He's basically top ten in almost every. Defensive category in the Premier League. Exactly. So once people start talking about you, when you are not resolute, when you are not that determined or mentally strong, it gets to you. Mm. Then again, you have that narrative of people saying, if you don't play for the Black Stars, go your way. They are humans. They've got family members. They've got yep. friends. Yep. They've got parents down here. They hear what goes on around and mm. then they communicate with them as well. So True. some way, somehow, it gets to them. But generally, that's my take on uh, Mohamed Salisu. I think some session of the media have not been fair with him. Mm. Um, we've pounced on the narrative without knowing what really the matter is. Have we asked ourselves why he didn't play the first six months at Southampton? Mm. Nobody cares about that. Nobody wants to know. But there are some reasons, there are certain things, there are certain yeah. conditions. Yeah. And his reasons for not playing for the Black Stars... They're very told, personal. Very personal. Yeah. And some are administrative. Yeah. I mean, even the personal ones intertwine with being administrative. Exactly. Yeah. So sometimes we need to be empathetic a bit. Put ourselves in the player's shoes. If you are in Salifu's shoes, would you say you play for Ghana at this point in time where you have a few things to thrash out? Hmm. You understand? So it's not entirely about he actually saying, no, look, uh, it's not time yet to play for the Black Stars. It goes beyond that. So let's give him some time. But on the whole, I think... It depends on how he reacts to this particular dip in form. Should mm. I call it a dip in form? A it, it, it is, I mean, I mean based defender, on his own high standards this season, mm. that's definitely a dip in form. Because every, every other defender has, you know, their moments. Low moments, high moments. And it's how you react to them. It's what makes you a staunch footballer or, mm -hmm. you know, a professional footballer. So I, I, I see Salifu's situation as a normal one. And I think he will come out of it pretty surely. <laughs> More on Sali Sudo. Is he the best Ghanaian centre back in the world? <laughs> One of the best. No, Sam. <laughs> One of the best. <laughs> One of the best, but not the best. Not the best. He's one of the Who's best. Who's the best Ghanaian centre back we have? Ben Curran, we don't have one. We don't have one? So why can't he be the best then? I know. Is he not? Okay, let's, 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 <laughs> let, let me and Sam do this right here. Trying to be diplomatic, you know? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's do this, right? Among all our, our centre-backs, he plays for the, the, the most high-profile team out there. Yeah. Okay, maybe not. Maybe Daniel Please. Amate will give him a round for yeah. that money. Amate plays for Leicester. He That's plays for team. Southampton. But he's played more minutes than Amate this season. Mm. He's been more prominent in his team than Amate this season. Um... In terms of value, in terms of transfer value, I think he will go for more money than any other Ghanaian centre back if he's ever to be on the move. That I agree with. We can, you. We kind of, okay, that so I there, there's you. that. And so, where would you rank him? Okay, let, let, let me let me let me dump this down for you a little. Where would you where would you rank him if you had to place him among our centre backs that we have? He'll be among the first three. Top three. Yeah, top three. So, is it a situation where? If we were bringing him down here, he will have to earn his spot. Or you think that, based on what he's done already, he has a reputation, and so he walks into the starting lineup? Um, it would depend on what the coach wants. Okay. We would have to play to... Okay. The tactical... His, exactly. Whatever the coach wants to mm -hmm. do on the day. If it's going to be a three-back, then why not start Jiku, Salisu, and then Daniel Amate? Okay. Jiku, Daniel Amate, mm -hmm. uh, Mohamed Salisu. Okay. 
Mm. Three back. Three back, yeah. That's an interesting <laughs> it's an interesting lineup there. I like it. I like it. I, I saw Otuado's team do three back sometimes. I saw them do five sometimes, depending on what we were doing, whether attacking or defending. I like Salisu. I like the best players to play for the country. And I think this bar form will definitely pass. But like Sam Riley mentioned, it's it's how you manage these situations. All players go through rough patches and so um let's see how he handles this one let's take our final break here when we come back we have a few more players to track and then we'll take the show home welcome back to the tracker here on city tv we have a few messages here uh, i'll read those out and then we'll progress with the tracking uh, this one here um says that richard richard Ofori should be used as the first goalkeeper for his experience, um, confidence, and unique talent, trust him. He can do it. For he can do it. But for Jojo, Jojo is good. But we need to get. Uh, but to get somewhere, yeah, I can't really make head or tail of this one. Let me read this again. It said Richard Ofori should be used as a first goalkeeper for his experience, confidence, and unique talent. Uh, we can trust him on that. Uh, he can also do it. Jojo is also good. But we need to get uh, we need to get to somewhere, okay? James, all the way from Lassie Mepa in the Upper West region. Uh, I think I get the input of what you're trying to say. This one here says, Boati Adam has not been lucky as a Ghanaian player. Such a player with great talent at Beta Jerusalem, although he's not scoring much, uh, he's not scoring much. I can tell you, he's one of the best in the Israeli league scoring his sixth goal this weekend so uh, please do add your name when you do send your messages ransford cranting from kasua says that good morning i think each of the goalkeepers deserves to be in the um, goal post for ghana pertaining to if um, the person is constant in his club and is performing i believe with time we can have a world-class goalkeeper so uh, a lot of you seem to believe that both Ofori and Wallacott are good enough. Um, let's let's move on with the tracking and let's go to um, the championship. Let's talk about Antoine Semenyo. Antoine Semenyo plays for Bristol City. Now he uh, is one of those who had agreed to switch nationality to play for Ghana during the playoffs, but he picked up an injury just before the playoffs happened, and so he couldn't be available. He's recorded two assists and one goal since the playoffs. Uh, scored one of those goals uh, this weekend. He's, he can play as a winger, he can play as a striker, he can play as, an, uh, as a number 10. Sam, this guy looks like he wants to... He's, he's knocking on the door. Constantly, constantly. And that's yeah. what you expect from a player or a young chap uh, of his caliber. He makes a chance to play for the Black Stars, mm -hmm. but he is not resting. Uh, he has bounced back, continuing from le where he left off, scoring, assisting. And he is quite a unique player. If you ask me, um, ambidextrous, yep. very right athletic, foot, left foot, mobile, yeah. knows how to get into those dangerous positions. Mm -hmm. And exactly the kind of striker, ch typical championship kind of striker. Uh, he knows how to bully his way through, meander his way through. I love that, I love that statement you just yeah. made. Typical championship. Yeah. And, and if you know what typifies a championship striker, you will appreciate this statement more. A championship striker, you, you have to be rugged, you have to be quick, you have to be... Cut all you, corners. Yeah, you, you, you have to boxes. be tough because really? you can play as many as three games or four games in a in week, a week yeah. in a championship. Yeah. So I wasn't surprised that he got a knock prior to the World Cup playoff yeah. because, I mean, he's had... He played a lot of games Yeah. and he's a starter, a regular starter yeah. for, for... Whenever he's fit, he plays. He plays and, and that, that tells you the caliber of striker... Uh, he is someone who is not scared to mm -hmm. run at defenders, mm -hmm. someone who knows how to pick his moment, yeah. knows when to shoot and not to shoot, and he's that's, a great that's assist very as important. well. Yeah, he knows how to give an assist as well. And yeah. if you have a striker created in that mode who can give an assist, can score, it yeah. tells you you have everything you need in the player. Hmm. Just a bit of some polishing and game experience or high profile games then you have a finished product so mm. Antoine is one for the future uh, I'm glad that the qualifiers will offer him an opportunity to have a crack at the national team uh, you know to see if you know, he would he mm. would be he would well, be he would be in the, in the train to to uh, Qatar mm. I mean you, you you love to see him play in the qualifiers where would you place him strike left right where will you play him as a main striker but with his athletic, you know, nature, I'd love to play him through the middle. Mm. 
Yeah. Probably yeah, as a number probably as a number ten or through them as a number nine. Number nine. To the middle. Yeah. Let's get to Felix Afena Jan um, because we are getting reports that Jose Mourinho has approved for Afena Jan to go on loan. Um, I, I want to believe that will be from next season uh, somewhere because this season is almost um, coming to a close. Um, I hear Sassuolo have been mentioned as a possible loan destination for Felix Afena Jan. Sam, this guy, Ghanaians are falling in love with this guy. He's not even scored a goal yet for us, but everybody's like singing his praises, talking about how great he is. Mourinho has approved Afena Jan to go on. Yeah, this is the goal that I like. I, I, I can watch this goal. I can watch this go a thousand times and I won't get tired. Uh, they took that goal off, man. <laughs> it, should, it should bring that goal back. I think this is the one where he came on, one touch, two touch, and the ball's in the back of the net. Long distance goal there. The, the, the bench was that Look, look at him. Look at look him over him. there. <laughs> Just, you, you, only get, you only get this time. Look, look at, at, at that goal. Oh, Typical Cherry strike. This goal is filthy. That goes for 35 yards. Typical strike. 35 yards. Yards. I don't. I don't know if you guys at home appreciate what 35 yards is. <laughs> 35 yards is a very long distance to be scoring from. In fact, most players won't even dare to score from 35 yeah. yards. They won't even dare to shoot from 35 yards. And as a teenager making your debut, 18 years. 18 years to have that confidence to strike that ball mm -hmm. uh, from that Look range. At the technique on it the tells ball. you a lot about oh him. My goodness. It tells you a lot about. And talking about the loan move. He needs it as part of the developmental mm -hmm. you know, stages in every player's career. He needs one or two loans to, you know, put you Shopping in that him. exactly to put you in that rhythm, uh, for the use of the right word. I think Jose Moreno has analyzed the situation really well and uh, getting him a loan during the Serie A yeah. is a perfect move for me. Mm. Uh, if it had been the Serie B or a different league, I would have said no, no good for but him. Serie A, same Serie A. Serie A yeah, so I mean, great. like same level where he mm. can Rob shoulders with the creme de la creme. Mm. It tells you they've got a very good plan for the chop. Let's do, let's do the final one. And I'm, I'm going to box two players into one because they were in the same game over the weekend. Mohamed Kudus came on late and assisted for Ajax. And the man celebrating your shot there, Dutch-born uh, Ghanaian uh, Brian Brobe was the one who finished off the Kudus chance. Now, Brian Brobe, before the playoffs, um, again, according to reports, we're trying to get paperwork for him to switch nationality. We couldn't get the paperwork done in time, and so he couldn't come over. But he was on target this weekend. Mohamed Kudus providing the assist. Sam, just snap thoughts on these two guys, especially Brobe, and if he does have a future with us. It's a delight to watch two Ghanaians or people from my motherland actually uh, detecting the pace in a high-profile game of that nature. Yeah. That game was almost 0-0. Yeah, it was saw, almost done. No, Kudus yeah. comes off the bench, assist Brobe, bang. I'm sure Eric Ten Hag would be scratching his head now. <laughs> How come I kept Kudus on the bench for yeah. so, so long? Yeah. I mean, and even after his injury, whenever he comes into a game, he, he tries to dictate the pace, tries to you know, put down a marker. And, and mm -hmm. typical of Mohamed Kudus, he influenced the game yesterday. Yeah. And that was a game-changing uh, you know, heroic from him there. And Brown Bo Broby, um, like you rightly mentioned. Look, see how, someone, how athletic he is. <laughs> strong guy. He's quick as it, hell. It'll be good to have him for the Black Stars. That's if he will agree to play for the Black Stars. Mm. Let's see if I can read a few more messages uh, before we go, and then uh, we'll take this show home. Um, I'm trying to see if I can get my message box to uh, pop up real quick so I can give you some messages before we go. Yes, this one here uh, says, fantastic discussion. Keep it up. This is from Ima from St. Patrick's Hospital in Offenso. Big ups to the people in Offenso doing the watching. Uh, this one here uh, from Lawrence inside Joje. In the Volta region, he says Ofori should be used in the qualifiers and Wallacott in the World Cup um, to reduce the hatred among them. I don't know if there's any hatred among them here. I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> Sam, thank you very much for uh, helping us do the breakdown. Thanks Always for, appreciate you being for here. Having me. Thank you guys out there for uh, watching. Do send in your thoughts when we, when we do get on the track, how to do the tracking. Uh, my name is Benjamin Nketiah. It's been a pleasure coming your way. Same time next week, we'll be back on CTTV with the tracker.